Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we have a leaked benchmark for the upcoming Intel Cabby Lake i7-7700K, which we are expecting to release before the end of 2016, and it is shaping up to be the fastest four-core processor that Intel has released to date, coming in with a base clock of 4.2 gigahertz. That was a spec that was leaked a couple months ago. We reported that over off of WCCFTech.com, where they said the 7700K would be clocked at 4.2 gigahertz out of the box and boost to 4.5 gigahertz. And now with these numbers coming in, uh, courtesy of OC3D where they had a database benchmark for Geekbench, it looks like that is holding true as it is clocked at 4.2 gigahertz, at least as far as the base is concerned. So we can see here with the results from Geekbench that it is pulling in a score of 6139 on the single core and for the multi-core performance it pulled in 20,271. So really good scores, absolutely dominating over the previous generation 6700K seeing an increase of about 15% on the single threaded and 19% when it comes to multi-core. As we can see on the charts right here, the graph showing the 6700K pulling in 5343 on OC3D's own numbers. That was the last gen processor that came in at a base clock of four gigahertz. So 5343 compared to the now 6139, that is a pretty big jump that's going to mean a lot, certainly for gamers or if you're out there doing um, multi-threaded uh, type stuff like Photoshop and video editing, then this should be a pretty significant jump forward for you types of people as well. Although most people running a 6700K probably aren't going to run out and get the newest processor right away. I am planning to pick one of these up because I'm currently running an i5 in my test system and I want to remove some bo a bottleneck there. So I am hoping to pick up one of these new i7s for the test system and we'll see if I have to get a new motherboard or if these will be compatible with the previous Z100 series boards from Intel. Uh, in the multi-core performance here, you can see that it did come in at the 20,271. So according to OC3D's charts, that would put it in somewhere behind the 5820K, which is a six core processor. So that is no easy feat. It's coming in just behind the six core processor in multi-core performance, which is pretty darn good. And I wanted to go ahead and actually run my own test. I have an i7 6800K in my system. That's a six core 12 threaded part. And I usually have it clocked to 4.3 gigahertz, but I went ahead and adjusted it to 4.2 gigahertz so that we could hopefully match the performance of the i7 7700K uh, and see where the numbers would come in. So right here on mine, I was able to pull in a single, a single core score of 4775, while the multi-core was 22,348. So while I did edge it out on the multi-core performance by about 2,000, um, on the single core performance, I certainly did fall behind the new i7-7700K, which is something I expected because usually the single core performance on the quad cores are a little bit better, which is what makes them uh, more superior for gaming at least. Um, if you were doing something like video editing like I do on a daily basis, then the six core is going to prove more beneficial to someone like me that uses it for that. But if you're just a gamer, um, getting one of these quad cores with the stronger single core performance and with the multi core as high as it is, it's probably going to be a better choice for gamers. And when I was doing this, I, I was recording a uh, I was recording the benchmark and it actually got my curiosity up because I was recording it with OBS initially and I was like, I wonder if OBS versus Shadowplay, you know, which one of these actually uses up more CPU resources. So I went ahead and recorded the Geekbench, uh, the Geekbench benchmark, which is, that's, that's a hard thing to say. <laughs> I went ahead and recorded it with OBS and with Shadowplay and we, you can see them here side by side and with the final result, Shadowplay was actually using quite a bit less CPU compared to OBS, even though on OBS I was using the NVIDIA encoder option just like Shadowplay is using on the actual graphics card. And it did win out though. The GeForce experience uh, using Shadowplay came in the single core was 4747 and the multi core was 22,057. While on when I was using OBS, I actually scored 4652 and 19,856 on the multi core. So just food for thought. I was I was genuinely curious as I was as I was recording this. You know, I I wanted to have a vanilla result, which is the first number I showed you guys with no recording going on whatsoever. But when I was recording it, I wanted to see which one would have more of an impact. Turns out it was uh, OBS, even using the NVIDIA encoder, uh, which should you know, it, which does certainly reduce the CPU overhead. 
of using OBS significantly, but it doesn't bring it down all the way. And for doing uh, normal, just desktop recordings, it looks like uh, Shadow Play may be the better tool, um, at least if you're trying to minimize the CPU impact of your recording software. So I just thought that was pretty interesting. I wanted to include it in there for you guys. And I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And please let me know your thoughts on the upcoming Cabby Lake i7 7700K down in the comments below. And if you're thinking about picking one up, maybe if you're on a little bit older generation processor, like back on Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge, maybe this is going to be the time for you to upgrade. And if you want to see any of the links to the sources for today over at OC3D, I will put a link to that down in the description below as well. But until next time, I'll catch you next time. I did it again. I just did that the other day. I, until next time, I'll catch you next, just whatever. <sighs> I need some coffee. I'm tired. All right. I will catch you next time, though. And you got the finger snap. I forgot it last time. I know some of you noticed. <laughs>